Welcome to the place where we learn about and learn from the leaders in our field who are powering human creativity. I am Aaron Dworkin, and this is Arts Engines. <laughs> Thanks again for joining me here on Arts Engines. Today's guest is Gabriel Van Alst, President and CEO of the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra. Gabriel, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. So, um, you know, there's so many things to talk about. And of course, your leadership in our field has just been extraordinary. Um, but one of the things that I feel like the orchestra is doing that's very interesting, and I noticed and saw the announcement of, of DBR, Daniel Bernard Romain, um, becoming uh, an artistic catalyst with the NJSO. And so first, I wanted to just kind of ask what on earth is an artistic catalyst, and then a little bit more about, you know, kind of what DBR will actually be kind of, you know, doing with the uh, orchestra. Sure. Um, the, the, the two questions are really linked, because um, this journey began with us uh, basically this time last year. Obviously, we're all in lockdown. We had a vision of coming back, uh, having some sort of socially distanced recorded film concert. We have a series of concert films. And we knew we wanted to start um, reflecting the times. And we began thinking about um, who could compose a piece for us in a short amount of time. And of course, the social justice movement of last year um, began. And we quickly began having conversations with DBR and he wrote us a piece called I am a white person who blanks black people, um, which was an incredible way to start our co virtual concert season. Um, obviously very provocative title makes you think as a white person, it makes you fill the blank in for yourself. And so there's an immediate engagement uh, not just in listening to the music, but an intellectual engagement as well with, uh, with words. And um, Shen, our music director, and DBR hit it off amazingly. And we had known for a while that we wanted to appoint um, uh, an artist practitioner of colour to come help the orchestra to advise us in some capacity. And based on the conversations and experience of Shen and DBR, it became apparent immediately that he was the person for us, you know, great music, great intellect. Um, he is a polymath, a uh, triple threat, whatever you want to call it. And um, we basically co-created this position with him. Um, we knew that it was, as I said, we knew that we wanted to bring in um, someone who could advise us uh, beyond what Shen does in programming with Patrick, our programmer. Uh, and as the relationship unfurled with DBR, it became clear that this is someone who can be much more than just someone who's advising about programming. He's going to be performing with us. He's going to write at least two orchestral works for the symphony during his time with us. He's going to program chamber music. He's going to be involved in the youth orchestras program. He's going to be involved with our Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Committee. And so once we began to look at the total, the, 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 the sum of everything that he was doing, it was much more than a sort of artist in residence. And so, again, collectively, we came up with this word catalyst because we envisage the way that he's going to influence the symphony, not just catalyzing the work that we've been doing around diversity and equity, creating a more equitable orchestra but you know pivoting us and pushing us into the future and you know challenging us in the right way and sometimes ways that are difficult for us to face but um altogether we felt that catalyst was this brilliant word that sort of summed up both the artistic contribution that he's going to make to us but also the sort of intellectual and um basically uh, social changes that he's going to help uh you know steer us towards and advise on I just I love so much of that, and I think about even so many of our of our partners uh, with Arts Engines and viewers uh, who are watching. And I love that it's kind of that number one. Of course, it's this idea of 
broader than an artist residence, broader than we're just commissioning someone, and that we're really wanting this, this person to have a substantive impact on who we are, on how we do things. Um, and I just love that and that kind of evolution and, and feel like we could, I could, I'm imagining if we replicated that across the field, how empowering that would be for the field. Um, and then also love, especially the word catalyst, the idea that while DBR might, might spark uh, a certain chain reaction or um, think that, that the orchestra itself is part of whatever that is. It's not just, okay, this person comes in and they do something, but rather we will do different things because of their involvement. And just really, really love that. And of course your selection of DBR, I've had the opportunity to know him, uh, went to school with him at Michigan. Uh, we played one of his pieces on, uh, on my grad recital. Uh, so I, I know uh, exactly what you mean in terms of both the artistic quality as well as the social impact that uh, that an artist or an artist citizen like DBR brings. Um, and so it kind of going broader to the orchestra as a whole, kind of is this part of a, a lot of work or, or direction that you see for the orchestra? I think about the commission uh, with Taishan. Are there other things like that? Do you see this as all part of, of, of an overall kind of direction or trajectory for the orchestra? Absolutely. And, you know, we've been on this journey for a moment, um, not long enough, but also, um, you know, it, it's not our first steps. And I just want to shout out to uh, Bob Wagner, who's a, a musician within the orchestra, who founded the work here at the symphony. He's a board member of the League of American Orchestras, and he really set us on our journey a number of years ago. So when I arrived four and a half years ago, we had a task, a, a DEI task force that quickly became a committee. And that's sort of been steering the work so far. So when DBR joins us, you know, we're a couple of paces into our journey. I'm not going to say we're at the end of our journey. And, you know, over that time, we have had various, um, you know, successes, various humblings. Um, and, you know, we have a, a wonderful fellowship program that we founded a couple of years ago called the Colton Fellowship Program, which provides opportunities for young artists of colour to come into the orchestra at full salary and full benefits for up to two years, which we're very, very proud of. We have been commissioning artists of colour for a, a number of years. And over the last 12 months, we've committed that all 50% uh, of all new commissions will be commissioned from um, composers of difference, whether it's um, race-based or gender-based or another factor. Um, we have been uh, committed to increasing the diversity of our board, which we've gone from 5% uh, people of color up to almost 20% with the aspirations to have at least 25%. Uh, the same too with the staff, we've been looking to increase there. And of course, the different present, uh, presenting artists of color on our stages as well. And this has been hugely important for NJ, uh, NJSO because, you know, we are Newark based, uh, which is a largely African-American Latinx city. And, you know, it's important for us to reflect the communities that we serve. And, you know, at the center of a lot of what we have been doing is a sort of mindset shift, you know, quite frankly, for a long time, orchestras and the symphony, the New Jersey symphony is no exception to this, have had a rather sort of colonial attitude with their communities they serve and saying, here, let us solve the, your issues with the power of the transformative power of music. And we're trying to sort of flip that into being what are the issues that face your community. How can we, with the resources of an orchestra, help you solve those issues or help you on your journey? And, you know, that reflexive nature that sounds like a subtle shift, but it's actually quite a transformational change in mindset for the symphony. And what that has meant is, and I'm gonna circle back to Taishan in a second, I promise, is um, a, a view that we are much more at service to our, the communities. And so, you know, Taishan is a, is a Newark, he's a son of Newark. Uh, he grew up with the education programs at NJPAC, which is uh, one of the six venues that we perform in all across, across uh, New Jersey. And, um, we had the opportunity to co-commission him with the Detroit Symphony, and we were meant to have the world premiere. Unfortunately, COVID got in the way, and Detroit had the world premiere uh, of a new violin concerto for Jenny Ko. And, you know, it was a no-brainer to us because we want to help elevate amazing voices, particularly those who come from the communities. Again, and it's a virtuous circle. Um, 
we we help the community if we help the community the community comes to us and you know whilst that's a a, pro, a, a benefit it's not really um it's not ultimately the goal quite frankly you know we are the new jersey symphony orchestra um we i come from australia where there's um you know, arts are fun, publicly funded, and we get a million dollars from the New Jersey uh, State Council on the arts every year. So I view that every citizen of the New, of New Jersey is an investor, is a um, is a stakeholder in the New Jersey Symphony. So we have an obligation to serving everyone in New Jersey. So highlighting the amazing talents of Taishan by commissioning him, by programming him, and other artists like him. You know, it's part of what we should be doing and what we can do. And so this is amazing. And, you know, we have a lot of uh, administrators uh, who are, you know, who, who tune into the show. And as as you think about this work, right there, I think that there are some who say, oh, well, you know, I, I would otherwise do it. But there's there's too much pushback or, you know, members of my orchestra, or members of my staff are just not down with it, et cetera. Have you either found that there were some of these obstacles and or just from a if from a purely managerial hat for all of mm -hmm. this extraordinary work that you're doing, is there you know one or two um, kind of kernels of advice that you would share with other administrators who would like to follow in your footsteps, who maybe want to have an artistic catalyst like DBR or want to do this type of commissioning like Taishan? Um, change is hard and you know, I think the important thing is that you understand that your aspirations in, there have been several moments on this journey when I have been frustrated that I haven't been able to move faster or move the organization faster, or we haven't been able to do X and haven't been able to do Y. And again, I, I go back to sort of thanking Bob at the beginning for setting us on this path. And I think that the work and this type of journey is cumulative. And whilst it can be frustrating having conversations at the beginning and, and you know, we have, we've been having town halls over this year with our musicians, staff and trustees um, to discuss concepts of equity and what they mean to the different constituency groups. And sometimes, you know, we can all be frustrated because there's different levels of understanding and knowledge, but it's only by going through and having those conversations that you can get to the place where you're doing work um, in an authentic way that is owned by the entire organization. There can be a temptation to just say, you know, I'm the boss, we're going to do this. And, you know, to be fair, there have been certain parts of this journey when that ha I have said things like that. Um, but it's so much more impactful if the organization goes with you and, you know, read a, <laughs> read a book, 10 books, a million books about the joys of change management and understanding that, you um, Fear can be a very powerful emotion. And just because, you know, it, it, this is complicated work, but it's also easy work. And I was in a conversation with Aaron Flagg the other day, um, who, I, who may or may not have come on this program. And he was talking about the fact that, you know, if you say something that is racist, it doesn't make you a racist, it makes what you said a racist. And there can be, that was very powerful to me because you know, again, sometimes in this journey, you hear people say things that they don't, doesn't necessarily um, uh, demonstrate their intention. And having sort of an understanding that everyone is in a different place in their journey will help leaders uh, drive this work through their organization and lead this work through their organization. Because sometimes you hear that and it becomes disheartening and it can say, well, I can't do this here because because of the, you know, the whoever it is in your constituency group that is uh, questioning or, or doubting. But, you know, stay strong and talk and, and take, take a step. A journey begins with a single step. Wow, this is just, I think, extraordinary advice and, of course, a testament to your leadership. So, unfortunately, we're just about out of time, but I always like to ask, you know, especially thinking about this type of work, which can sometimes be really tough, for your own leadership, where do you draw on strength or inspiration on those toughest of days? Oh, our youth orchestra program, honestly, I was a, I, I say, I go down to the youth orchestra rehearsals every year because I say that I was a youth orchestra kid. I would not be doing what I do today if I had not, you know, had the benefit of 
the type of program that the symphony offers. And when I see the kids in that program, they are representative of all the communities of New Jersey, the optimism there, the sheer joy that comes from collective music making. And that sounds like a pageant answer, but honestly, like it's sort of the crying at work moment that you get. And it really is the thing that drives me forward every single day. Wow. Well, Gabriel Van Alst, you truly are one of the arts engines who is powering human creativity in our field. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me, Aaron. Thank you.